I got into education because I guess I've always been around children. I'm from an Italian background, so I've always had the love of working with children. I don't know what else I would do other than teaching. When they take on a new perspective or you challenge their preconception about a subject that maybe they didn't think they would like or that they weren't good at, well, those are the things I really like about my job. I do believe that teachers need to teach. I've been on and off as a director for 15 years and it didn't seem as complex initially and gradually there's been more and more responsibilities put on leaders while they're still, you know, responsible for the education of the children and teaching loads. I think it's got more difficult because the funding has reduced. I think that's the difficulty. And you kind of understand there's only a bucket. You've got to rob from one area to pay the other. So, you know, at a system level, I don't know how they solve that. But at a school level, it has become difficult. A colleague of mine's been going 40 years, they're towards the end of their career, and they said that they think the last five years has been their hardest ever. So the conversations need to be had. I guess the, the fight, the battle in my head is really how to get all those things done really well, but also teach really well and be able to have, you know, the priority on the children. We know all this paperwork and all this admin is really important, but I want to be able to have my head in the game when I'm with the children. I've found that definitely the accountability, just the complexities around behaviour support. I spend a lot of time supporting families. I do a lot of home visits, um, which means then the administration time is spent after school or in my own time. We know that if we have families on board and we work with the children and we build those relationships, then children are going to come to school and families are going to engage, but the administration time. We need to be able to be doing work that leads into better outcomes for children and yeah, having time to do all that. Complexity within here, we have a very complex school, we're a category one school. We have SSOs in classrooms. We have an LCSO in every single class. An LCSO is our learning community support officer. They're a, a school services officer that is assigned to a single class. When there's extra complexities, which is really across the board for most sites, those children aren't coping so well with different people coming in and out and they're used to someone helping them manage those emotions and moving forward with that and then they get someone new and it can trigger off one child to another child and just unsettle the group and it impacts on their learning. Mm. And as soon as you take staff off the floor, then it impacts children's learning. Having ancillary staff in the classroom, we know research tells us that when you have more than one adult in a classroom, it actually supports behaviour management, right? That makes a really big difference, actually, in a lot of different ways. You know, as a teacher, I have a lot of flexibility because I have an extra educator in the room, an extra adult. One of the good things about having an SSO who's studying university is a teacher has picked up particular skills in her role as an ancillary staff member because she was given the opportunity to train to work with children, complex children with complex needs at a one-to-one -one level. What we found is that she's all those strategies that she learned as an ancillary staff member, she's been able to implement in her classroom when she's working with particular children. Because I've managed to get a job where I SSO'd, I'm known in the school known in the community have built so many relationships with kids prior to even starting to teach. Having this extra really high level of support, look, I'm sure it's not cheap, I know it wouldn't be, but I feel like if you're thinking about the impact for young people, I think that's really crucial and it makes a huge difference. This is an experience that is worth sharing because it shouldn't just be this year in a brand new school with such wonderful facilities, it should be something that every learner in South Australia could access. I hear lots of people talking about leaving. I've, I've known some amazing teachers who have left the profession. What we find in our schools, particularly regional school, is we pick up a lot of 
beginning teachers, which I love because I find that we grow our teachers, so it's a really positive thing for us. But in saying that, we also know that they're most the most in inexperienced teachers are working with the most complex children and so we have to look at ways that we can support them but also look at ways that we can improve outcomes for, for children. I think we need more people coming in to teaching. We also need to really focus on how they come in and how they're supported initially and we need to wrap that support around them so they want to stay in the profession. We try and use local kids because we find if we grow our own and we nurture the people within our community, the, the likelihood is that they're going to stay on. But then also we've got the upper end of people who stick around, so why don't we help them stick around for longer? Or why don't we focus on retention of people, lots of new people coming in with these incentives and these people who have been here all this time aren't getting that value. And they're the people with the knowledge, they're the people who can actually help these young ones coming in. And so how do we pull that all together? I guess I should be coming up with answers, not more questions. But um... <laughs>My father was very much, uh, he valued education and I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to work with children where I could make a difference. It feels like there used to be a lot of happiness and laughter in the sector and you know people enjoying things and now people are going to meetings because we've got to go to a meeting and get things done. There's not that, there's not the interaction because there's not the time. You have your bad days but then you see something amazing happen and it might just be a quiet little thing and just go, okay, this is why I'm here. We want these new people coming in to be able to see that really quickly and build that love for that but then be supported to be able to manage. Because one size doesn't fit all. Go into the classroom because that's where the reality is. And my advice to people working in the department, in the union, is that you need to come into schools to see the realities because every school is different, every environment is different. But to have more time for us to fly, for us to do what we do really well, because I think that's the best way for our learners to benefit. There is hope. There is hope for our children and I certainly look at things in an op optimistic way. We just need to work out how to best get there and I think that's something that the system needs to continue to work toward. You know, how can we best get there understanding that every community, every context is different and we need to work together uh, to be able to achieve that.